It's a song I'm not going to get. It's not it's one of your new. favorites. It's not one of your favorite groups. It's the Doors. Which one is this? By it's the called group? The End. Oh, The End. This okay, thank end. you. Yes, right. I remember that. And I would have gotten it eventually. Because this is the end of the world. <laughs> it is. Do your read. So get in the last read before the world ends. Here's what a pretentious Jay, okay. song this is, by the way. Tony, here's the latest on this air travel disaster caused by the volcanic eruption in Iceland. Roughly 30% of the scheduled flights for today are expected to take off. The volcano is, a, is continuing to erupt, but the ash is not as dense as it was over the weekend. The economic impact is rough. Airlines losing nearly $200 million a day. British Airways... Well, just uh, charge for uh, carry-ons and you'll be yeah. fine. 45 bucks or more. British yeah. Airways uh, chief executive says the airline currently has significant funding available to sustain it. Uh, airports are losing just as much, uh, almost $200 million a day. And 6.8 million passengers have been affected. But here's the news you want to hear. The seismic activity in the current volcano is a threat to the nearby bigger and badder volcano. Much bigger, which much better. if that one erupts, it would be 100 times the strength of the current one. That one's name is Katla. That's, that's going up. Release the Katla. That's going up. Now, it is interesting the way you frame this story. Being a veteran newsman, as you are, I give you all credit. I allow you to frame the story any way you want to frame it. But you have framed it in terms of the crisis of the airline industry. And it's a corporatist. I, no, I was just giving sort of bullet point updates no, no, no. on this developing yeah. story. But let me get to... Please. Because the, the entire <laughs> coverage of this is about the inconvenience to passengers in Europe or people trying to get to Europe and the lack of commerce as it flows from the European continent to other places and back and forth. And I, and I understand that. Nobody has said a word about the poor schmoes in Iceland who could be killed by the dropping in. All the animals, all the people, every, no, nobody cares about that. Nobody cares about that. The much greater issue is how does it affect me? It's not about these people in Iceland. They are fodder. Nobody cares. And because people, when you think about it, what are these people even doing in Iceland? Why are they staying there? It's an awful country, and so on and They've so forth. They've got the furry hat with the two horns coming yeah. out of it, like I've the guy at Vikings a, games. I've heard Reykjavik is a beautiful city. Nobody has ever been beautiful there for women. more than ice, two it's nights no, it's not Greenland's so that they can ice. fly no, free to Europe. Yes, Iceland has a, a, has 15 beautiful women, maybe 150. The entire population of Iceland, I'm sure, is under 3 million. It, oh, it's I'm much sure, less than I'm that. sure there's nobody in Iceland. it's under a million. So there's nobody there. There's nobody there. Now, let me, let me get to the, the other oh, point about this. Wrong in about 10 okay? <laughs> if you listen to this, if you listen to the pressures being exerted upon the governments by the airlines to fly the planes, if you pay attention, it should remind you, if you're of a certain age, of the plot of the movie Jaws. That's what this mm -hmm. is about. Oh, come on. Send the planes up. We need the money. Oh, come on. Open up the beaches. We need the money. This is the only way we make money on the beaches. Okay, one girl got her leg bitten off. Uh, you know, let's, Where's let's, Quint when let's, you need him? Well, okay. That, that, that's, the, that's the whole point that I want to make, that the pressures exerted here are going to be, come on, we can do this, we can do this. And the first plane that flies through this thing and disappears and goes straight down because it eats all this volcanic ash and its engine seize and it's done, everybody's going to go, oh, we shouldn't have done this. Oh, this is a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh, my God. How could we do this? And my point as somebody who's fearful about flying is you, you don't send them up. Of course you don't send them up. This is like this is the bird uh, problem times 10,000. This is thick stuff. If you look at, if you look at Iceland, the entire country – is covered with like a foot of sludge at the moment. That can't be good for a plane, right? Even if it doesn't get into the engine, it's like the thing with ice. The weight of the ice changes the course of the plane. You can't. What is this junk? It, it's like it's schmutz beyond well, words. Well, whatever Volcanic it is, it's ash. better for the environment than all the jet fuel that the right. air would be choking on if these planes are flying. By the way, population of Iceland, you want to take another stab? You were a little high at three I, million. I said it couldn't be more than three million. Mm. She said, said much, under a million. Much. It, it would barely be higher than three million if you multiplied it by a factor of ten. Three hundred seventeen and a half thousand. That's all there are there. So to uh, a let's say there's estimate. ten thousand beautiful women. Now I want to I want to continue on this vein with with this this whole 
sort of airline circumstance because it's now going to it's going to land on it's going to land on us right well i was just watching this weather map and it really reminded me of the blizzard weather map because there was this the wraparound, wraparound effect and the, it's the coming this forecast. way and then it's going to wrap around and we're going to be caught in this swirl of ash everybody not, is not here yeah no not in pa- my parts house of parts of north america but they're saying primarily north areas of, of, of canada when did the wind Nova when Scotia. did the wind start blowing from europe to us i thought it went the, the other jet way stream goes the other way goes the other way isn't that the big one the other thing well, maybe the it's other coming around the entire <laughs> globe <laughs> the other the other way. point that i wanted to make because i'm i have watched i've watched these people in iceland the volcanologists which is a yeah. fabulous name volcanologists Live long and prosper right that's their <laughs> like yeah here's what they know they know nothing Absolutely nothing. They don't know when this is going to stop. They don't know why it started. They don't know where it's going to spread. They are out there collecting little little baggies of schmutz. They're out there every day with their little baggies of schmutz, and they want to go run numbers on them. And when it's all over, if anybody survives, they're going to tell you how to win the last war. They don't know anything. Anything. They are a bunch of of nattering nabobs, to quote the late, great Spiro. Am I wrong on this, Gene? They know nothing. See the weather maps? Look at that ash movement. Yeah. It's like circling the whole globe. That is one he, Here's what ash. they do know. <laughs> they do know they from know history that the last three times this volcano erupted, the one with the like end of the 30 world. letters, Dinosaurs lots went. of consonants. The next one went, The too. next one Kotla. went. Katla. Katla went as well. And what happened? Uh, it was big eruption from Kotla because Kotla is a bigger volcano. But what happened? Well, there were no airplanes the last time this thing went off. So it's a long time ago. So they didn't ago. have to deal with, with air travel. These but people, it did kill the dinosaurs. This, this, this is the problem <laughs> with going to all these academics. This is the problem with, with ascribing to any of these academics anything at all positive. They, are, they know zero. It, once every 400 years. You go to these dopes and you say, "What's going to happen?" And I go, oh, "I got to look at the schmutz." Well, last but time I'll it was talk pretty bad. To, yeah, I'll talk to you in six years. They're shoveling up they're the schmutz. So, they're, this is what is so angering to me about people like volcanologists. Please <laughs> shut up and get out. Well, what do you want, Miss Cleo, to tell you what's going to happen next? I mean, how can you know? Well, but you know what? You, there are a lot of places you can go and find out what's going to happen next. There's a lot of people in America in a lot of different disciplines that can tell you Bruce, what's going to happen Boudreaux next. Bruce doesn't even know what goalie well, he's Mel Kuyper tonight. is why? smarter than he's volcanologist. Why didn't they learn anything from Mount St. Helens? Or why didn't Ma- Mount St. Helens have the same effect? I think they capped it. Because there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing to learn. This is a phony baloney job. With phony baloney academics. Well, this is the this is the stuff that Mel Brooks. This made Mel Brooks billions of dollars because he understood that these guys are phonies. They walk around with the, with their you know parkas on and their schmutz bags and their little ascots. dowling rods and they and and they entertain people at parties. Oh, I'd like you to meet Thor. He's a volcanologist. <laughs> You ought, to, you ought to take a giant piece of lumber and hit him in the snout with this. Yes, he's an idiot. <laughs> what do you right think, Jean? Ash. Jean with her why, silent laugh. Why would these volcanologists be any smarter than the meteorologists? They're not. They're all right. just they're all Bob Ryan. The their pants. They're, they don't know what they're there's – no, there's no, this is not science. They don't know anything. When it's over, they'll tell you yeah, what happened. Tell you exactly what happened. I don't the day care. After. Right. I don't care when it's over. I would like to get out ahead of this thing. Here's what you need to know. The volcano Stupid. is going to do what it wants to do. That's right. That's exactly it right. It is what it is. Volcanology be damned. We'll be back. I'm Tony Kornheiser. This is the Tony Kornheiser Show. The Tony Kornheiser Show. Are you paying attention to this volcano? No. Not at all? Not at all. So you don't, you're not going to Europe anytime soon, so you don't Well, no, I'm, I'm certainly not going anytime soon. I am trying to plan a trip to Spain for the summer there now, but... Um, I don't think no. Spain is affected. It's not yet. Spain is southern, oh, not, southernmost. So. That just shows you how I'm not paying attention. No, I'm not paying attention. Not, not at, at all. all. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm sure that you have the end of the world coming. I, the end of the world is upon us, absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's well, upon us. Volcanoes we've been having for like several million years, right? Not quite like this, though. Not quite like this. We, I mean, are we going to, is it? Is ash going to cover us at PTI by 6 o'clock? No, not today. Not today. Maybe Thursday, but you'll be out of town. The Atlantic Ocean. Well, it's coming across. It's coming ash across. You'll be, you'll be able to walk from Europe here uh, when the ash. How great is that?
Leonard Williams is a PhD in New Orleans who listens on podcasts is going to tell us why there would be glass from the exploding volcano in Iceland. And by the way, just get ready for glass in your neighborhoods. Because this these it's the next one glass. the next volcano that explodes is the mammoth volcano. Okay. He says the lava in the volcano contains silica, which is the main ingredient of glass. When the volcano erupts, the hot lava hits the cold Icelandic air and crystallizes, turning it into glass. Then, of course, you have glass on the ground looking like a fool with your glass on the ground. (laughs) His second theory is that Window Nation forced the volcano to blow to collect all the glass pieces for their business. And he says, please keep in mind that my doctorate is in education, not geology, so it's a 50-50 chance. He knows about as much as a volcanologist. But if there was glass all around, how come there's that dark, muddy schmutz all over the That's animals? Ash. Well, wh- well, why is it is glass part of the ash? No, glass would be a different substance. Well, where, is the glass? Yeah, where is the glass? Where's the glass then? Why isn't it like falling well, on the rooftops? Why like doesn't hail? it twinkle when it comes down? And why doesn't it knock? Yeah, you know, and why doesn't it grade. kill the animals? All the farmers have sent their um, wives and children, daughter children. Away. This is like the ancient Hebrews 15,000 years ago. They've sent the breeding component away while they take care of the animals and the land. And they want to protect their animals. You know, which I understand. Mm-hmm. But animals, as I think we've learned from the, um, the tsunami... Animals are aware of these they changes. They knew this was coming. Cause, they're cause, like Wilbon. Yeah. They yeah. are not they're surprised. Not surprised at all. They know it first. They feel the earth they heard moving the under beat. their feet. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And so the animals are aware of this. Now, the animals are penned in, so there's not much they can do. But if you set the animals free at no, this they, point they in time. They knew already. I mean, I've read reports that many of, of the cow herders up there, a lot of the cows had broken free and made a break for the ocean. And a lot of them were just hanging out in the water in the ocean. To, uh, they're freezing to death. They're making this right. up. They can't get to the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. But, but were you, I guess Iceland is kind of landlocked. But were but. you... Well, it's not actually landlocked because it's, it's an Ireland. It's an island. Well, then why couldn't they get to the ocean? They'd be surrounded because they're by cows. Three sides because they can't island. run that fast. They're cows. It's going to take yeah. them a long time. All right. What, did you say that you were going to go to Iceland for a wedding? Uh, no, well, Sheehan was telling you he he knew of someone who went for a bachelor party. I've I've heard Iceland or I guess Reykjavik specifically. Well, that's, be a, well what other cities spot. are there? I guess that's it. They have they, how many? I mean, we determined there's nobody there. Seventeen and a half thousand people in the whole country. And it's your position that all the women are hot. That was not me either. No, you're, whose you're, position you're now, was that? That, you. that was <laughs> Nigel. That was mine. Nigel, it's your he position that all him. the women are hot. Yes, that's right. Have you ever been there, Nigel? When I, when I stowed away to come to the states, we actually stopped off in Iceland for. You a You sure bit, it so. wasn't Greenland? I was pretty they're very sure. similar. Let's do the, do the hot women stay? How long do they stay in Iceland? Don't they come here and become supermodels? Well, I think they work them in shifts, yeah. So it's like, you know, 12-day shifts, and then they bring in fresh supermodels there. I mean, because I, I have enough money to send for a couple of hot Icelandic <laughs> so, uh, women. So check this out. So I just did yes. a little research. Reykjavik, the city. It's the capital. 120,000. But the Reykjavik metro area has 202,000 of the 317,000 people. So it has most of the country. people. Yeah. What is, what's the second biggest city? Uh, don't know that, but I know that Hannah Berna is the mayor of Reykjavik. Is that a woman? Don't know that either. Don't know that. Let me click I don't on get involved in, those, in that name. And Roger in England writes, apparently Where's the he ash... Been? Huh? We haven't heard from Don't Mark. know. Yeah. Apparently the ash from the Icelandic volcano is now headed for Canada. I didn't know that Liz Clark had such control over the forces of nature, which leads us to the Liz Clark email, Nigel. What is the Liz Clark email? Well, she said she also spent uh, a time in Reykjavik and said it was absolutely lovely. Did she become one of the hot Icelandic babes while she was she there? Could be. I, I think I think when you get there, I think you become instantly a little bit more attractive. Yes. Do they do they all speak English in Iceland? Because they can their own language is unpronounceable. It's every word is fifty letters long. Well, they they do speak a bit of English, but I find that if you just throw money around, that's the international language. So that's really what they understand. I, I think want. Liz also wanted to straighten out some confusion between Canada. Iceland and Greenland. She says Greenland is the dump. And right. Iceland is quite No, well, then why Didn't would they have named that? it Greenland? That makes no sense. <laughs> right. Greenland Obviously means it's, it's Iceland because it's icy. Right. <laughs> right. Iceland's got to be a dumb. I mean, I love Liz, but <laughs> it's not the brightest bulb dumb. in the drawer, let's be do honest. You, do you think that the, the people in Iceland, what other than becoming a volcanologist, 
What do you become? A farmer, a yak farmer, a volcanologist, or you own a disco? <laughs> what else is there in Iceland? What are these, they got these spas because there's all this, you know, sort of warm water right under the ground. You know, there's... Great. It doesn't look warm. The people that get sent there, when they report from there, they're, they're wearing these unbelievable coats. Well, it is winter And the winter wind seems right to be now. blowing. You have to keep in mind. Well, I think also... What do you mean it's winter? It's, it's like mid-April there well, it's now. it's very cold. It's not winter all the time, is it? What's, well, how warm does it get now? How many days of really nice weather? You know, you asked me about the other major towns there. Yes. And unfortunately, I went looking. They're, they're all <laughs> completely unpronounceable, and they're all sort of, they're all like metro, but you, you're a better reader than I am. I mean, you want to take a shot at, at any of those? Uh, the major towns are the capital of Reykjavik, along with its outlying towns of Kopagavur, Harf. Fenargavor <laughs> and Garabor Rekjabenser. Garabor the international Rechab, 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 That's a great town. Huh? That's a great. I went there for <laughs> that. Did you go to that one? Man, what happens there stays there. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I was in the upper 20s, by the way, in this area of Iceland where I'm looking at now for weather. Wow. And is that the southernmost part of Iceland? Is that the good it, part? It's a, What's I, Reykjavik? I, okay, I'll check that Check one. Reykjavik. Right. And also, this is a, a fun little fact about Iceland. In Reykjavik, the, was, is, it, that's the thing dedicated to Michael Vick. And the prediction <laughs> that Michael Vick, if you get involved with the dogs, it'll Reykjavik. <laughs> I just thought of that. I just thought of that myself. That's great. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> Reykjavik. <laughs> Not forecast to see 40 degrees until next Tuesday, the 27th. So it's lousy now. So who went to... Went Upper to a, 30s. I get. It's probably beautiful I like in August. So you're suggesting... You go in that, August, it's probably sunny and 70 or something. I can't believe it's ever 70. I'll check that I out. can't it believe does, it's no, it does, 70. It, I got nothing it does to do. hit 70 every once in a while. It's a very rare thing, but... Well, then every once in a while would be what? Every, as long as the volcano explodes? Yeah. About that same amount of time? Right. And in the summertime, particularly June... There's lots of daylight, 22 to 22 hours of daylight. You just said 22 to 22. Oh, 20, oh 20, you know, it's 20 funny you say that. I've, I've read about guys that go there and have, have played golf. Play golf. Around, like you can play right. around the clock. And in the winter, you've only got like four hours. July. Are there strip clubs? Ju- I'll bet. I'll July, bet. The hottest, guy. July, the hottest month with an average high of 55, average <sighs> low of 47. That's terrible. August 54. Yeah. Freezing. <laughs> You're freezing there all the time. Well, I think you go there and drink vodka. But you want to know something I'm quite sure interesting? I'm sure they have a very high suicide rate. Look at this. Uh, if you look at this chart of their average temperatures, their coldest month would be January with an average high of 35 and an average low of 27. That's so it's not that cold. January. So, so does it not snow that much in, so the, the, in the ice? Entire, I guess it snows ice. The entire ice, temperature ice range is a high of 55 in July and a low of 27 in January. Yeah, but you have to take an umbrella with you to, be because right. the glass could be falling on your head. You know what? You talk about your snow, jugular not much you. precipitation at all. Because it's be all about, ice. looks to be about 25 inches a year of precipitation. We had more than that. We had much more right. than that. Greg Oden's got more than that in his pants. We, we really need to go to Iceland, is my feeling. Yeah. Let's do the show from Iceland. Let's take it, well... Road trip. As opposed to Rehoboth Beach. Let's uh, take a break. I don't know that you can drive there, though. To Iceland? Well, soon when the ash comes yeah. all It'll the way through the ocean. Bridge. Yeah. We'll be back. I'm Tony Kornheiser. This is the Tony Kornheiser Show on ESPN 980. comes Tony's mailbag, got your email faxes and your notes. Here comes Tony's mailbag, gonna read some for all you folks. Thank you, Gary. From Bob Gawler in Washington, D.C. So the great one wants to know what happened the last time Iceland's Gawler. volcanoes erupted like this, when Lockheed erupted in 1783. 50% of Iceland's livestock died, 24% of the population died as a result of starvation. The summer without sunlight struck Europe, resulting in several uh, severe crop shortages and some, well, I don't know, and some suspect that it created the conditions which led to the French Revolution. So nothing too major. From Charlie Flegel or Flegel in Bethesda, no jobs? I know you're getting a little bit older, but I'm surprised that you forgot all of 2009 in which it appeared everyone in Iceland was a banker or a stockbroker, hence them being blamed for destroying the European economy. Oh, that's right. Also, if you were born there, you have a 10% chance of being in a world's strongest man competition <laughs> or Viking. <laughs> uh, from Phil Knight in uh, Richmond, Virginia, I just want to know if Jean swung a cat, how many volcanologists <laughs> could she hit? Uh, from Troy in D.C., 
I was stationed in Iceland for a year. The warmest day we experienced was a 66-degree day on the 4th of July during the period when we got about 23 hours of sunlight. Many of Iceland's women are drop-dead gorgeous, and the younger Iceland people love Americans, but the older Icelandic people have a strong dislike. Farming, fishing, and drinking are three big-time skills of the Icelandic populace. Have a wonderful day. P.S. It is the windiest population in the world. Um, P.S. Two Other cities besides the top ten population are Keflavik, where the U.S. had military installations in 2006, and Sangerdi, a town where the ESA... Fish boats come in, packed daily. Some of the best ice cream well, in the world. What is windiest population? Yeah. Mean? Windiest place that's populated. Yeah, okay. Okay. Howard Metzger in New York City. The volcano, e.g. Falakal Jokal, is pronounced window nation. <laughs> also, the country's new slogan is Grunda Fajorder, the new Reykjavik. <laughs> Michael Lowe's from the Monumental Brass Quintet. First of all, I've been to Iceland for 36 hours like everyone else because we volunteered to fly the next day due to an oversold flight. July is the only month that does not snow. While in Reykjavik, by the way, a great coffee, beer, and music town, the weather changed rapidly every 10 minutes from overcast and rainy to windy and partly sunny. Bill Keister, or Keister, in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Keister. If only there were a volcanologist with the onions of Jim Cantori. Maybe his brother Tim Cantori. He wouldn't be reporting from 100 miles away. He'd be in the path of ash, telling us not only the temperature of volcanic expulsions, but describing the feeling of the searing heat on his skin. He would also not be scared by the name. He would not only pronounce the name, he would break down the etymology, which comes from an aboriginal language and means mountain that will end the world in 2010. <laughs> jump right into the ash hole. How great. Just yes. report right from inside there. How great yeah. is that? We have other emails that are very good, but I'm not going to be able to get to them today. We devoted our emails to the volcanologists and to this horrifying little country that's bringing the world down of Iceland. <laughs> if you're out on your bike tonight, stay clear of the ash. Do wear white. I'm Tony Kornheiser. From West Sealy in Williamstown, Massachusetts, best as I can tell, we have a space shuttle to get people back and forth to the International Space Station. And we have an International Space Station, so the space shuttle has some place to go. We have volcanologists because not everyone can slice meat. Frank Daly, the third in Southern Maryland. I'm shocked you aren't giving more attention to the upcoming NFL draft. According to so many so-called draft experts, the Rebrechtians are trying to move up to take the big kid Thor Yekambachobi <laughs> out of the University of Krapahula. Volcanologists have absolutely no idea how his career will pan out. Thank you. Um, from you, Milligan. Hockey pucks are made of vulcanized rubber. Therefore, vulcanology must be the study of hockey pucks. No wonder they have volcano dust in Canada. Also, listening to the show live on the radio today feels like a podcast. The last commercial break included ads for the Nats versus Brewers on April 16th, 17th, and 18th. That's done. Eric Schroeder in New York. I took a course entitled Earthquakes and Volcanoes when an undergrad at Middlebury College. It was one of the courses along with Physics for Poets and Chemistry for Citizens that were offered to fulfill a science requirement for all the liberal arts students. I don't remember much of the course, but in light of recent developments, I would recommend panic. Mark in Richmond, Virginia. I'm so tired of these volcanologist teams with decorated histories. This is just another example of what happens when you overpay for overrated free agent volcanologists. Mm -hmm. They take plays off and complain about being used in a 3 4 research team. You got to trade these guys as soon as you can because they're locker room nightmares waiting to erupt. Brilliant. Brent Ruckham, Columbia, Maryland. I can just picture you during the Renaissance. Chemist? What's a chemist? Alchemy? Sure. We all know alchemy and how it works, but chemistry? They just made that up yesterday, right? Seriously, get a real job like a conjurer or a surf, a court jester or a columnette writer. I like that too. Daniel Knack in Spokane, Washington. I've loved listening to an English lit major bash other fields as being ridiculous and contrived. Yep, all the English lit majors I knew in college seemed assured they were on the fast track to success. Unless, of course, they weren't. What college major will you attack next week? Integrated pest management? Management? I didn't do badly. I'm stuck on this door. But other than that, I seem to have had a good career for an English lit major. You're out on your bike tonight, everybody. As always, do wear white.